Hey, welcome back guys. In this video, we'll talk about callbacks and promises. So callbacks and promises allow you to work with asynchronous code. So what does asynchronous or synchronous mean? So with synchronous programming, things are happening one at a time. That means you will get the result when a particular action is completed. Until then, the program is on hold. But with asynchronous programming, multiple things can happen at the same time. Now, for example, when you make a network request, it might take some time for the results to come back. So with asynchronous programming, it allows us to continue our program. Once the result is back, we can capture it and do what we need to do with it. So let's take a look at some example to fully understand how this works. So if you notice over here, I inputted a package called native request. This basically allows us to make some HTTP calls. And what we're going to do is I'm um, using this website, JSON placeholder, and we're going to try to get the data for this API over here. So this basically will give me some random data. And if I actually hit run here, this is the data it will provide me. So we're going to try to replicate it through our code. So what I'm going to do is create a function. I will call this get to do's and then simply create an error function here. And then I would do request dot get and I can pass in my URL here. And then I'm going to simply just to create a function and then just type in here console dot log. And I will simply type here my to do data right now because I'm not really getting any data. I'll say, okay, this is my to do data. Then I'm going to call this function. Now, before running this, what I'm going to do is also print out what's happening before this. So I will say fetching data. I can say started and then copy the same thing and paste here fetching data completed because we ran this function, right? And this would basically give us the API data. And it would say it's completed. Now, if I run this, let's see what happens. All right, you realize what happened here? Well, we said fetching data started, which makes sense. It printed this out over here. But instead of printing out our to do data, which is what we are running here, our function, it instead gave us this fetching data completed over here. And then later on, it gave us my to do data. So, what's happening here? Well, this is what I meant when I said with asynchronous programming, your code continuously run and it doesn't really stop what's happening. So this particular part get to do's, it's taking some time for that API call to come back, right? So it might be taking a few seconds for that API call to actually get resolved. And then we are getting the data back. So instead of just stopping everything, what JavaScript is doing is he's like, okay, you continue with the next step over here, which is show me this particular thing. And then actually whenever the data will come back, give me the data back. So this particular piece here is what we're using for our callback. And this is allowing us to basically say, Hey, continue with the program. Meanwhile, I will go in and try to get the data for you. And then I will print it out. So this is what happening. So we got this, we started, it went to the next step and then we got the data back. So this callback function over here, instead of creating error function, I can also do simply this way function. And then this would take my actual function here. But instead of doing this, like I, I prefer using error function, it's much more cleaner. So this function over here, or the callback function takes a couple parameters. It takes error and it takes data. Now this will be different for every um, API request that you will be using or every package that you will be using in this scenario, it takes in an error and it takes in data. So instead of printing my to do data, I will simply change this to data. And if I run this now, there you go. This time it's actually printing out the same result that we saw over here. It's the same thing. It's actually printing us back, but it's actually not printing out the way we want. We wanted to first print out my fetching data started, then get me the actual to do data and then give me this so that I can, let's say you can imagine that after it's completed, you might want to do something else with that data. So how can we do that? Well, to actually work with that, we simply have to work in our callback. So we are using the callback over here. And what I'm going to do is just open this up in uh, curly brackets. And then I will, let me clean this up a bit. Now I will move my fetching data completed right after this. So this way, what I'm saying is, Hey, okay, you do your API call. And once that comes back, give me the date and tell me that the data is completed. And then I will run my function here. So let's see if how this works. There you go. This time it's right working as expected. So it's saying fetching data started and then we got our data back and then it's saying fetching data completed. So this is how callback works. So we are actually able to use callbacks and actually do whatever we want. And you can imagine over here, I can do whatever extra stuff I want to do with my API call. So I can maybe use data to get some user ID and then try to make some update on that particular user or whatever I want to do from there. 
Now, this is pretty much the basics of how callback work. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you an example of how exactly a callback you can create yourself. So I'm just going to copy some code and paste it over here. If I hit enter, then just paste it and I'm going to comment all of this stuff out. We don't need this for now. Now, let me just show you what's happening here. So I was trying to just replicate how a user's API would work. So I've created some users here. Now I'm doing, hey, get me some users. But I'm using set timeout, which basically allows me to actually wait for some time before the actual data comes back. And then I'm just looping through those users to actually get the user I want. And then here I'm creating a user. Now this one is taking two seconds. So I'm saying, okay, when you create a user, all it's doing is it's appending into this user's array. But it takes two seconds to actually do that. Now what I'm doing is, okay, first create another user, user four, and then uh, give me all the list of all the users. So if I run this, let's see what happens. Okay, did you see it took one second to give us all these details, basically user one, user two, user three, which is expected because that's what we did. We used the set timeout, but we never got the user four back. So what exactly happening over here? So we are using this create user, which is actually appending into this uh, user's data over here or the user's array, but it is never actually printing us back. It's only printing out the first list, which is uh, the original list, user one, user two, user three. So what's happening here is that our get users, it's taking one second to come back and it actually gives us the data right after one second, but this is taking two seconds. So we don't even know, or basically JavaScript doesn't know that it needs to wait for this particular data to come back and then give me the list of all the users. So in order to say, okay, only give me the users. Once you create a user, we can take advantage of callback. So to do that, I will simply put in a callback here and then I will call that callback over here. So this is basically, I'm saying, hey, just have a function and then call that function. And then instead of doing get users here, I'm gonna just put get users right after the, uh, I create a user. So I will put that here and then remove from here. Now, if I run this, let's say, it's gonna wait more than one second, obviously. So if you notice it waited around three seconds, which is one second here and two seconds here, and then it gave us the user four back. So this is how actually callback works. We are saying, hey, okay, you create a user, but I want you to wait until the uh, function gets executed. So don't run get users until this create user get executed and we get the result back. So this is what's happening. So we are saying, give, give me the user for, it creates that user and then it runs this get users, which basically gives me the list of all the, the users that are there at that moment. And so we already appended it. So it gave us the user for back. So this is basically how callbacks would work. And you would typically see something being used like where you're directly using a callback instead of creating your own. But I just wanted to give an example so that you have an understanding of how actually callback works. Now we're going to take a look at how promises work. So promises are basically came in ES6 and they allow us to work with callbacks in just a better way or a cleaner way. So let's take a look at how that actually works. So I'm going to comment all of this out. And then I'm going to go back to my original code over here. Now what we can do is actually convert our existing function to a promise. To do that, what we will do is simply in our function over here, I will do, well, let me try to fix this. Okay, this is good. I will do return new promise. And this promise takes in a resolve and a reject state. I will do resolve and then reject. And then just in my brackets over here, curly brackets, I will move all of this code and paste it here. And pretty much this is it. So this is how you can create a promise. Now, what will happen is, if I actually print out get to do's, I'll do console.log and print this out. Let's see what happens. There you go. So if you notice it says fetching data started, which makes sense, then it gave us this promise pending. So what's this? So promises, there are three stages. There's a pending stage where it's actually trying to get the data. There's fulfilled stage where basically it got the data back right over here. And then there's rejected where basically something went wrong and it actually gave us the error back. So to actually see how this will work, what I will do is instead of just printing it out, I will return the data. So I'm going to comment this part out and here I will just do resolve and I will say data. Okay, let me fix this. So this will now resolve the data and give me the promise back. And then I would also do if there's an error, then I want you simply just reject the data. So just reject it. So if I run this right now, uh, what happened here? Oh, I have to just put this in the brackets. Okay. So there you go. This time it's not actually giving us the data. Instead it's saying, okay, this promise is right now in a pending state because we haven't really resolved that promise. 
So the way promise would work, it's actually waiting until we do the next step. We're saying, okay, now I want you to run it after a particular stage. So to work with that, we can use dot then. So the way that works is I will do get to do's and I will do dot then and then simply. So to get this data back, I would do response. And then I can just do print response back. And if I run this now, and we got an error because I've got to put parentheses. If I run this, there you go. It's saying fetching data. And then we got the actual data back over here. So that's pretty good, right? We are able to get this response back instead of um, using the whole callback thing. So we're taking advantage of using it this way by creating our own promise. Now, another way what we can do is to, if something went wrong, we can get the error back. So in this scenario, let's say if I remove this dot from here and if I hit run, see it's saying, oh, it's the actual URL you're trying to hit. It's not found because we removed that dot. So there is basically no API and it's saying unhandled promise rejection warning. So to deal with this unhandled promise rejection, you should always add a dot catch after your promise. So I would do dot catch. So this would catch any errors. And I will just simply do just print give me the error. If I hit run this time, there you go. This time, instead of actually throwing an error or an unhandled error, we are actually handling that and it's giving me the proper error back over here. So this is basically where it's actually hitting the reject state. And then from reject, we're getting the data back over here. So what I'm going to do is fix this again. And if I hit run, there you go. Everything is working perfectly. So this is how you can create your own promise. Now, most likely what you would do is work with an existing promise that someone already created. So to give example with the, in terms of making an API call, you would probably see that the, when you will make the get request call, this will give you a promise back. And then you can do dot then or dot catch, whatever you want to do after that. So this is typically how a promise would work in real life instead of for you to go in and create your own promise. But this is something if you do want to create it, this is how you would convert a callback into a promise and then take advantage of thought then to get the data back. So there you go. This was a short intro of how callbacks work as well as how promises work. So these are something that are extremely helpful and we will be using this throughout our series. And you will notice that we will continue to use uh, most likely promises all over the place. And in the next video, what we will do is take a look at async awaits, which is another way or an elegant way to work with promises. So I will provide a link to this code in the resources section. So make sure you try this on your own and practice so that you can create your own promise. You can create your own callbacks and actually get the data back and try out with different stages of promises, fulfill, rejected and pending and see what kind of data you're getting back. Maybe you can work with some other APIs that you already know of. All right, that's it for this video, guys. I will see you in the next one.